Assalamu alaikum, a very good evening and welcome to Ion Business. Today we will be discussing a job support scheme and the 10 p.m. curfew for the hospitality industry. Um, I have two guests with me uh, today. I have Mr. Nazir Ahmed, who is a barrister, who is a uh, writer. And I, come, I have on my following right, I have Wakan Hassan, who is a business advisor mm -hmm. and an accountant. Very good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to evening. the program. Thank you, for Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. As we, as you know, as, 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 um, as a businessman yourselves, uh, at link to businesses, we are going through a very tough time at the moment, okay, it 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 is not going away very soon. No. So we, you know, uh, in terms of what business are facing, what public are facing, uh, and 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 so on, with with the job support scheme, okay. What I'd like to pick up on that is what kind has an, um, this the scheme is it open to the general business in and whole, or is there a particular sector that will be passed out? Could you clarify on on, on it's uh, uh, thank you for asking these questions. Uh, this uh, new job support scheme is it's mainly for the um, uh, it's called uh, viable jobs. So the jobs that they uh, they need it basically. So say for example, um, first of all you got to look at the requirements. You need to be working at least 33 percent of the usual hours. So say for, so for example, if you are working um, if you're doing 24 hours a week, say for example, you need to be working at least eight hours a week. Um, in order to qualify for that. If there is a business, they are closed at the moment, they don't, they don't have any employees or they don't have any business going on, it's not for them. It's only for the viable jobs means they need, basically. They need some ongoing, business. businesses. ongoing businesses. But the pro their turnover probably has gone down due to the uh, like COVID-19, but they're still open and they wish to continue. So that, that's the support from the uh, government. I mean, is, is, is it lacking on taking people away? You know, like he said, viable. Viable. Okay. Yes. So, how do you distinguish viable and you know, um, business? I mean, the people obviously are going to be in need. We're going to have a lot of mass unemployment. What is your, what is your sort of thing on viable? You know, I mean, obviously the government has thought through what they're saying, but there will be a lot of people who will be losing their jobs. Uh, mm. A lot of companies will be closing, and in terms of viable. <coughs> Yeah, what exactly. I mean, as you said uh, at the beginning, that we are not going to get away from this um, coronavirus so easily no. in a short time. I mean, even nine, ten months ago, nobody has contemplated, has ever contemplated such scenario. And now uh, it is uh, clear to us that, I mean, it is not going to go away from us very, very soon. soon. No. Government was not prepared at the beginning okay. how to deal with uh, pandemic. Although they have done or taken quite a good initiative for the business. So the, the scheme you uh, mentioned about um, will replace the furlough scheme. And uh, as accountants have said, I mean, this is to help uh, businesses, viable businesses, to keep it running. I mean, mostly, I mean, uh, small businesses and medium sized businesses, those who are or have been struggling to survive. I mean, these uh, initiatives. Uh, from the government uh, as an initiative to help those businesses to keep going. That's a break. We have a caller online, sure. so I'll stop you there and we'll take that call. A very good evening, caller. How are you? Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Immigration or business? We're talking about job support scheme and the 10 p.m. curfew for licensed restaurants. Um, inshallah, the Barista Shab will be talking about uh, immigration uh, another program. All right, thank you. Wayne. Thank you. Every every Tuesday we have an immigration barrister who's who's doing immigration question and answers. Please do call in and speak to our resident barrister there. Thank you, uh, Nazir Bai. Going back to what you were finishing off, um, really in terms of the net plan of the next six months. You know? Yeah, it's starting um, from 1st of November. Right? November. And I think this is called uh, winter economy <laughs> plan. <laughs> plan. So it will um, go for six months. And again, I mean, uh, time will say whether it has been or it will be a successful uh, initiative for the government. We have seen previous supports, for example, furlough and um, uh, bounce loans, this and that. 
but uh, always the government has been um, has not been able to um, devise a plan, well thought out plan, how to uh, effectively support those businesses. But let's see how it goes. I mean, so far, what the government has done with the furlough scheme is they've, they've, they've done to their very best, which was not really prepared for it. And but the, going back to what was not prepared in, in the beginning of March when the first lockdown happened, we are likely to go on a second lockdown. I don't, I mean, obviously, hopefully, yeah, hopefully not. Yeah, I mean, are they better prepared now? Do you think the government is prepared? prepared now? Is it prepared for, for, for the businesses? Still, I don't feel the government is well prepared. I mean, uh, look at or compare with Germany how they have dealt with it. We are, I mean, far behind um, of Germany. Ger Germany, we Ger Germany are, our and economy, France, are they, are they, 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 the furlough continues till 2021. Exactly. Even that toll, Germany, how they were able to keep so minimum, we couldn't. Our economy is almost near to uh, Germany, so it is very irony. Now we are on the verge of second lockdown, as you said. <clears throat> Some parts of the countries has, have been already under lockdown. So London might be, I don't know how the way uh, in infection rate has been going up. But um, uh, testing methods, uh, the availability of testing kits, I mean, uh, the government has not been able to manage properly so far. So it's very ironic. We are living in a first world country where the government has not been so far managed well. Oh, on, the, on the ball, you know, it hasn't been really, could have been more could have been smoother. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when Germany was able to test 70,000 per day, we were not able to test 10,000. Okay. So that's the scenario at the beginning of the pandemic. Even uh, economic initiative, the initiatives uh, government has taken, and there has been a lot of criticism. I mean, for example, eat out scheme, how far uh, the government uh, were successful in putting those scheme. I mean, especially when people uh, make allegation that I mean, uh, this has spread uh, infection so rapidly, especially in London. Wakanba, you, you obviously deal with a lot of our hospitality um, uh, business people. Even um, tourism. Yeah. Um, Wakanba, I'll come back to you. We've got a caller online. Very good evening, caller. Hello, very good evening, brother. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Bala Soin. Yes, Bala Asi. I'm going to talk to you about our program, the Ion Business. Business is the lose of the coronavirus from our country. আমরা ব্যক্তিগত পয়সা প্রফিট থেকে আমরা এটা এই বাস্তব বাস্তব না আমরা লুজ হওয়ার মতো অনেক পয়সা কিন্তু লুজ হওয়ার মাধ্যমে দেখো কি আমরা ব্রেক দিতে হইছে প্রথমে আমরা গ্রেট বিটেন দেশটার সম্পর্কে জানতে হবে আমাদের পয়সা যা আমরা দুনিয়ে অস্তেস্ত হইব কিন্তু এর জন্য আমি বলতেছি দেশের একটা ক্যাবিনেট আছে না ওই ক্যাবিনেটের একটা সু কভার আছে আমাদের পৃথিবীর জন্য সারাটা পৃথিবীর জন্য যেটা এখন কেউ বলতে চায় না মুখ দিয়ে সারাটা পৃথিবী নিজ নিজ দায়িত্বে নিজ নিজ দায়িত্বে বড় হইতে চাইতেছে ওদেরকে চলতে দেন আগামীতে আমাদের এমন একটা গ্রেট বিটেনের সু কভার আছে তো এর জন্য আমি বলছি আমাদের বাঙালি বাই যে আমরা যেন তারাউরা না করি কোন জিনিসে পয়সার জন্য আমাদের ব্যক্তিগত ভাবে আমরা রেস্টুরেন্টে অনেক পয়সা করে লুজ হবে আর আমাদের প্রথম দিকে লুকাফতার করতে হবে আমাদের ওই বাঙালি ভাই বোনদেরকে যারা ইলিগাল আছে এই গ্রেট বিচেনে আমি উদাহরণ দিয়ে বলতাম চাই 1952 সালে যারা জেলে ছিল Sorry, we've lost the caller. Thank you very much for your your fabulous call. Um I think what the caller was trying to say is I think what the caller was trying to say is try and hold on to your money. Um, what can by going back to what we were saying um, about, um, do you think in terms of um, the furlough scheme, from the furlough scheme to the job uh, support, is, is that a carry on automatically or is it, uh, what, what, what would you? Okay, first of all, you need to understand the difference between these two. So, furlough scheme was, uh, it's got nothing to do with this new job, job support scheme. Mm. So, in order to qualify for this, you don't need to be on the furlough scheme. So, any new employer can even register for this scheme. Uh, but so just to be clear that even if they was not on the furlough scheme, they, they are able to go on to this job support scheme. scheme. Yes, mm. they can. And, um, 
But the thing is, they need to have, uh, say for example, if they even register for this thing, in order to qualify any employee, they need to be on the payroll, and RTA needs to be submitted before 23rd of September. So that's literally the announcement day. So anyone joining on the payroll after that day or submitting RTI for that employee, that employee would not be uh, eligible for this uh, job support scheme. So suppose someone started on the 24th. 24th of September. Of September. There are, will be people who have started on the 24th of September. Well, say even, they, even first of September. Even first of September, but their RTI was not submitted yes. before 23rd of September. So they will be left out basically under this new rule. So in terms of... Can I just uh, clarify this thing, how it's going to work out basically, in terms of um, the amount that they can get. Um, first of all, they need to be working at least 33 hours of their usual hours. Uh, usual hours. So if their normal hours is 24 hours a week, they need to be working at least 8 hours a week in order to qualify for that. The remaining uh, hours will be uh, reimbursed, one third will be reimbursed by the government. One third will be reimbursed by the employer, and they will not be paid for the remaining one third. That's how it's going to be divided. Um, in terms of the uh, payment, government support will be capped at only six hundred ninety-seven pound ninety-two pence. So the maximum, even if it's one third, the maximum they can contribute is six hundred ninety-seven pound uh, ninety-two pence. Uh, there's no like you don't have to be working thirty-three hours. Uh, sorry, thirty-three percent of the hours. You can do more than that if you want. So the, any hours that you're not doing is going to be proportionately worked out <coughs> and the government will reimburse to the employer. And it's going to be paid monthly in arrears. Uh, employer can make the claim after the end of the month, on the, on the following month, and then government will pay this money to the employer. Let's get Nazir Bai in here. What, what, Nazir Bai, um, obviously uh, Wakan Bai has a little bit more into figure side. What personal view, what do you think? Is that is that something, obviously if we go into the furlough, it was first paid 80% of the salary, then 70%, then 60%, and then it's going to come to, do you third. think this is this is, uh, this is really fair on people who would have to pay mortgages and, and, and so on? Well, uh, my view is uh, the government cannot um, continue supporting under furlough scheme for, for indefinite period. There has to be an end. Probably the government is trying to come out of that scheme slowly, slowly. I mean, if they come out of follow scheme uh, rapidly or suddenly, then probably a lot of businesses will be closed. So a lot of unemployment will happen. Exactly. So a lot of people will be unemployed. So their um, mechanism is to come out slowly. That's why follow scheme, I mean, it was 80% from the government support. Now it is one third. And again, cap is £697.92. Pence. Whereas in follow scheme, the cap was 2,500. So that shows the government. And again, the government has limitation. They cannot bring all the money into this area. I mean, they have to consolidate in other areas as well. And also, uh, the British public would have to pay those. I mean, the government is paying in now. In due time. Exactly. I mean, for example, post-Brexit uh, era, sorry, post post coronavirus era, probably government would have to uh, introduce a new tax regime, for example, to get those money. So uh, the government has limitation, and uh, within that limitation, government has been trying to support. But if we look at our neighbors, France, <coughs> Germany, where in the first first couple of months of, of, of the lockdowns and the virus, COVID-19, they said, we'll do it till 2021, where our government has said, okay, this is this is up to then, and that is up to then. Should you think uh, exactly? For the I mean, government, public, as, as, I said, as, I, as, as I said, you, you rightly said, as I, as I said earlier, the government has not managed properly and fully. I mean, from right from the beginning of the coronavirus, I mean, government was not prepared. Suddenly, it came to the government. Government tried to do something, so this is where we are now. So I don't think government. We cannot compare the government's initiative with that of Germany or even France. You think they could have done a little bit more? They could have done. They, 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 they could, could have, have done a little bit more, be, uh, sort of like, um, well, I mean, a little bit more better, a little bit more, more. Of course, more they providing. could have. I mean, if, if even if the government was fully prepared in February, they could have managed better way the coronavirus. I mean, they didn't give importance at all when um, uh, when uh, University of London, uh, Imperial College London publish their findings that if the government go ahead the way they are doing, then 250,000 people would die. Then government was, you know, 
uh, nervous. And then the state where they went for And so far lockdown. we have, what, 49,000 exactly. sort of exactly. figures so I mean, far, isn't even, it? Even, even their own scientists said if the government uh, could lock down two weeks earlier than they did, they could have avoided I mean, a lot of, lot of people. A lot of people. Death. Which, which, which only time will tell that if that work. I mean, obviously, as we, we speak and we see, clear, no. um, and then obviously we'll have some more finding where there are a lot of, lot of, lot of exactly. And, and this is the second wave, and a lot of people said, a lot, lot of scientists said, the second uh, wave would hurt even most than more than the first uh, initial coronavirus thingy. So uh, let's see how government uh, tackle this problem. How what can buy? You know, obviously, you work with the the, the 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 Indian restaurant industry or small businesses within our community, within the Bangladeshi community. Okay, this ten o'clock curfew. How do you think uh, it will sort of like affect us in terms of? Is it, is it just for the licensed restaurant? Is it just for the takeaway? What's your um, understanding of that? As far as I haven't really done very, uh, too much research on this in terms of curfews, as far as I know, the business have to shut by 10 o'clock. It's definitely started affecting businesses because um, there are areas where the restaurants are busy. They are, they are doing businesses still probably 11 or 12 o'clock. So uh, if they have to shut the business, meaning they have to prepare before that, they have to start preparing about like you know closing their door. So it's definitely affecting the businesses. Um, the initiatives taken by the Chancellor, which are effective from 1st of November, uh, is not that helpful in terms of uh, this job support scheme is nowhere near the uh, job retention scheme, which is uh, far low. Because if you, if you uh, look at it, it's only about, uh, you're looking only 22% of the usual pay. Whereas compared to you started off with 80%, then 70%, now 60% for October. So this car few and all these measures, uh, uh, some of the measures they, they like you know uh, taken by Rishi Sunak, some of them are good. Like in terms of like you know uh, job retention scheme, it was good, but the handling of bounce back loan wasn't good at all. And the way it has been handled, you could just have a company no trading, and you could just get, you could be given fifty thousand for without any checks basically. Despite knowing the fact that you wouldn't get those money back basically, so they could have handled that in a different way. So um, there should have been more checks and more thorough in terms of you know, exactly, before yeah, lending yeah. out this public in terms public of money public because money. It, it is guaranteed but by the government. Eventually, we'll have to pay this money. The public will pay this money back. Mm. So that means we'll have to burden this this fifty thousand pound. Whoever is taking or hundred thousand pound, whatever, we will have to pay contribute to this fifty thousand pounds. The taxpayers, the British public. Nazir Bhai, uh, do you think the eat out, the help out, you know? In terms of, we don't have evidence yet. Has that really increased a little bit further to 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 the uh, viruses for the next phase of or, or another lockdown, as we are seeing a lot of other <coughs> cities and towns in north? Do you think this has? Uh, a, well, I to do not. I do not have hard first evidence, but people are saying, I mean, uh, help out, eat out, help out scheme e to a great extent. I mean, help uh, spread virus from uh, different. The community groups. I mean, people were not so, so people were relaxed, really. I mean, meeting so together, people, eating. Because of the government giving this out to the public and saying the public has thought, okay, forget, you know, put the COVID 19 behind you. Behind and, and then just, you know, go. Well, uh, I, I don't agree with that policy at all. Uh, the government, the way government tried to help. I mean, it could have been done other way around. But um, the way they try to help the businesses by giving 50% uh, a discount and a lot of people jumped into the. Uh, there were queues. Exactly, and uh, there's been fight as well. I mean, in some places <laughs> to go. Where the understanding understanding of uh, the, the the scheme mm -hmm. where. The, the, the client, the customers, probably for fifty percent of the bill, but it's capped to ten pounds exactly. per person. Exactly. So, the idea. Well, I I don't agree with the idea, and uh, to a great extent, I believe personally that that has helped spreading um, viruses uh, to, to a great extent. And uh, in relation to curfew, uh, what the accountant has said, uh, first of all, I would like to say whatever law is made, we must obey the law. Of course. So this is what we have to do. Having said that, we have right to criticize the law. And uh, at the one hand, uh, on the one hand, government is trying to put curfew to limit this and that. Again, the school is open. People can gather for fox hunting. 
there's not so much a relax of six people I mean, in a Moscow um, charts or even a wedding. Um, so, and or, or even um, a funeral prayer. Six people are not limited. So on the one hand, you say you can't <clears throat> meet six people together. And there are some other occasions where people are mixing, and uh, especially from school. Although um, children's casualty rate is very, very low, but they can easily spread the virus to their since, parents well, and since grandparents. Since the school has opened up, um, the, I mean, the correct numbers, I'm not 100%, but it's, it's, it's about two to 300 schools that are closed in the first, exactly. first week and second week, hmm. where we have a couple of the university up in Scotland, Edinburgh, um, Manchester, Glasgow, yeah. um, where the, the students are in two weeks quarantine. Exactly. So there are conflicting approaches from the government. And in other words, you can say like, go, don't go. Do, don't do. So those sort of confusing, conflicting approach, you cannot expect to have a good outcome. Better result. So really, what, what, in terms of whether it is business, whether it's the education, I mean, yes, you did say the number of children, casualties are very low, but they are taking it home, they are taking it to the extended family exactly. and, and friends. And our community, especially the British Bangladeshi community, will suffer the most because it is our uh, custom to live in a unit, united family, I mean, extended families, where uh, grandparents, parents are living together. So these children, they may not be um, a victim of casualties, for example, death rate is very, very low, but they can easily spread to their parents and grandparents. I mean, there, I think there have been a small study done in regards to the Asian and black minority that we are the biggest risk in... Exactly, we, we have already been, yeah, exactly. Especially in the Bangladeshi community. Mm. So really, we, we, like yourself, businessmen like yourself who are working within the community, really need to encourage our fellow uh, like uh, colleagues, our fellow uh, businessmen and families to really take that, sanitize your hand. No, exactly, exactly, and exactly. And I, again and again, I try to say, look, you must not, we must not take this coronavirus lightly. We should not uh, mix even two, three, four people unless we have to. And maximum six people. Even below six, we should not be meeting four, three people unless we have to. This is a very, very serious. You will find book launching program, this program, that program, that meeting, that if you are able to live on. If you die, everything will go off. So please take this coronavirus seriously. seriously. The general public, in terms of how strict, obviously we must follow any law that comes into force. But do you think it is we be followed strictly by the general public, where you have business curfew for 10 o'clock and where you have no more than six people. Do you think that will carry on strictly? Well, it should be. I mean, as I said earlier, once law is made, as a good citizen of the country, we must Everybody obey the law. Everybody must? Law, obey the law, exactly. However, we are living in a democratic country. We are not living in a police state. So we have every right to criticize the government policy. But again, not to break the, not break to break, the law. Not to break breaking the law. the law. I mean, we have democratic right to, I mean, we can exercise this right different way. But once the law is made by the government or by the parliament, we must obey it. So if we criticize, if we obey the law and if we criticize, then government would be compelled to change the law. And they have been changing laws from now and then. So we must obey the law. And uh, government is trying from their part to contain this virus. But we, as a citizen of the country, we must do from our part. We must carry exactly. on helping. And everyone, lawyers, accountant, uh, broadcaster, journalist, everyone has a responsibility. A role to play. Exactly. Everybody has so a role we, to play. So we should collectively work together. We should. I have with me uh, Nazir Ahmed Barrister, uh, and I have also have Wakan Hassan, who is a business advisor, and they have been talking or discussing and um, giving us some information on what the rules and the regulations that we are passing through at this difficult uh, time. Um, let's go back to the topic that we were speaking of. If we go back to Wakan Hassan, um, the, the VAT um, for the help out to eat out, okay? Um, is it, is it uh, applicable to pay 5%? What is it? And 
who are um, the VAT applies to? So, so is the 5% VAT applies to just the catering industry or otherwise? Okay. Um, this reduction in VAT rate, it's, uh, it's, it's got nothing to do with the eat out or help out scheme. Eat out or help out scheme on its own is, is a separate thing. Um, that just took place in August. Um, uh, that was a government initiative to encourage people to come out of the home so that um, uh, basically to encourage people to come out so that they can start going out like you know out of the fair basically because they've been home for all these months in terms of the VAT reduction so for is mainly for the hospitality tourism restaurant takeaways this this reduction in VAT and that's effective from July uh, I think it's 13th of July till it was till uh, January but uh, Rishi Sunak has recently extended it till uh, 31st of March so they can benefit from this reduction. Is in it, is it rate. just just the restaurant, the hospitality? Is Actually, it manufacturers? No, manufacturers, manufacturers, retailers. They are not part of this. It's just the uh, restaurants, hotel, um, takeaways. So they, they are mainly. Uh, so if if you had if you have a ice cream manufacturer or ice cream supplier who supply to a hotel, a restaurant, what terms of what would they pay? What what rate of? Uh, they will pay the usual rates. Uh, it's just only for this um, those uh, some specialist sector, four or five of them. So ice cream seller was applying, it's like a retailer or probably a grocery shop they're supplying chicken or meat or whatever to the restaurants. They don't qualify for this scheme. They got their own scheme. Usual scheme could be retail or whatever, their own scheme. But uh, this VAT reduction is only applicable for those uh, specific Hospitality, sectors, yeah. the restaurant, restaurant and, and hotel industry. The good um, thing would be obviously if they want, they, they need to talk to their accountant because there, there is a... First of all, obviously, they will pay reduced rate, which is 5% instead of 20%. Uh, if it's flat rate, obviously, they will pay much lower. It's, it's again 4.5% instead of 12.5%. Um, is if it's a restaurant or takeaway, um, there is also po po possibly a possibility of like you know uh, reclaiming VAT from HMRC rather than just paying it because uh, you could be paying um, a VAT on your purchases or probably rent. So they, if they uh, like you know, I would like to uh, make this awareness. Probably you need to talk to your, if you're in a, a businessman, you need to talk to your accountant. They could probably look into your VAT affair and um, they could potentially uh, work out reclaim rather than just paying. Uh, also, um, I would like to touch up on another thing. Um, if you uh, could not pay VAT due to this COVID-19 for you between, bet really between, yeah, between 20th of March till uh, 30th of June, uh, now the time has been extended to pay your VAT bill for the 11 month for the 11 months yeah that's uh, till uh, so you go up until 31st of March 2021 to uh, pay the VAT bill that's it boy. Um, just to clarify um, if for example a restaurant had customers in there before 10 o'clock say 9 o'clock hmm. and they were there till <clears> 10 30 how how does the law work in that? How are they penalized? Are they are they are they gonna be um, sort of? Yeah, with this restriction, uh, some severe penalty has been introduced. I mean, for example, individually, um, it was a one hundred pound fine penalty. It has been uh, doubled, two hundred pound, and for each repeated uh, offense, offense, it will be double up to. 3,200. And in extreme and rare cases, police can stay to arrest. And in, in, on businesses, I mean, if they fail to comply with those restrictions, the businesses can be fined up to 10,000 pound. So that is very draconian measures. And, um, and uh, as you said, businesses should comply the law. Even it appears to be unfair. But still, they have to comply it. So, 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 so I mean, for example, if if a person has a symptom of um, coronavirus and he must isolate himself, and if he doesn't, then he can face the penalty of up to one thousand pound. So, the people who will be dining in a restaurant, do they have to get everybody out? Uh, by 10 o'clock. Does 10 that o mean that well, they can carry on because they're already inside no. the premises? Do they carry on staying or do they have to be shut shop I, by that time? I don't think we should be, I mean, businesses should play with the loophole. Mm. 10 o'clock is shut, is shut. So there should not be any people inside so, the so, business. So if, so if, if a customer called up and said, look, I would like a table for, at 10, 10, uh, 9.30, 
and they come with half an hour unless it's fast food if you go to sort of like a casual restaurant half an hour is not enough time should you let them should you not let them to be on the safe side what do you well, it, it can, it, it's, the judgment will be the uh, operators. used by the operators I mean the businessmen I mean of course the customers are aware, well aware of the law and businessmen should be well aware of the law so if they can serve and they can take the uh, services by 10 o'clock that's fine otherwise uh, they should be told of this so they should actually leave the premises at 10 o'clock and the business should be shut at 10 legal requirement exactly Right. Um, by, I mean, in terms of where the government has said take an apprentice on, take it 15, 16 years old on, take it under 25 years old, how does a rest, restaurateur uh, apply for these sort of uh, apprentices? How do they really, do you, you know, in terms of taking one on or taking two on, what do you suggest? How, do you, how is it done? The restaurants can benefit from this scheme, but then again, they have to comply with all the rules and regulations of hiring someone because they have to bear in mind these apprentices, they are obviously between 21 to 24 age. So you have to be considered, they, this is pro it could probably be their first job. So you have to comply with all the rules and regulations in terms of the apprenticeship, you have to pay the correct pay. Uh, it's much reduced amount rather than the usual uh, rate per hour. The restaurants can definitely benefit from them. Uh, it's no probably based on my experience. I haven't really seen restaurants taking on like in apprentices, uh, especially within should the restaurants. Should we encourage them? We, we should we should encourage them because um, first of all, this will um, create the employability like you know, for these apprentices. Plus, you can benefit from their. Plus, government will reimburse like and they will pay a grant worth up to fifteen hundred pounds. So, our restaurants they we, we need to start thinking about like you know different approach in terms of uh, staff management because we are still stuck <coughs> with the traditional ideas of like you know hiring certain number of staff and their salary so if we train them and if we manage to uh, train apprentices is it will definitely bring uh, value to the businesses and, it will and I'll, I'll, the next generation of for the next generation yeah because uh, another problem is there has been a lot of talks about i don't want to touch upon that like uh, the problems with the indian restaurants and why is it dying and things like that obviously uh, our elders they know better than us uh, all i can say is that can still be turned around uh, as long as like you put into new ideas into like and if you adopt new new ideas like apprenticeship or other things Think about other businesses. They are like you know, they are they are doing well. So how 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 is it, how is the restaurant? Uh, where where does it start from? Where where does it? They go can contact with the local uh, like you know. Uh, we often get uh, contacted by New Home College to take on apprentices. Um, they can contact with the job center or local college. They can advertise. Um, it's easy to get like you know lots of applicants all the like like all the time. So they can easily get apprentices from those sources, job center or uh, local colleges. Nazibar, how, how important is it for us as small businesses, whether it's restaurant, grocery, a law firm, to get these um, apprentices on board, get them to do... It is, it is very important. I mean, uh, we will get indirect benefit. A lot of people don't understand indirect benefit. I mean, if you prepare someone, and that will be an asset for the business community. And uh, on top of this, you will get uh, grants from the government. You will benefit financially. Exactly. Financially, financially you will be benefited. And uh, if you prepare someone, and if you prepare some people, they will be able to work for the business. And indirectly, you will be benefited. And a lot of people, a lot of us, we don't see indirect benefit the way we see direct benefit so we should really encourage them to come in we have a new guest who has just joined us we are we still have uh, Nazir Ahmed barrister writer we still have Wakan Hassan a accountant a business advisor and now we've got we've joined by Badrul Haq of Tokuiz restaurant um, so welcome to the program Badrul Bhai, thank you very much for joining us uh, and, you, and, and uh, I hope you've had a safe journey getting here. Um, Badrul Bhai, uh, I was speaking to uh, Nazir Bhai and Wakan Hassan early on with different business effect that COVID-19 has put us through in terms of. I, what I want to know from you, I mean, how are you managing? You have a huge uh, restaurant. You have a huge restaurant where they help out and eat out. I mean, we were talking about has that really pushed people to, you know, the, the, the infection rate going up? You know, obviously, regardless of whether it's a small or a big operation, you have to do and take that. And how did you manage with, in terms of the people, the number of people that you serve? How difficult was it? I mean, the, at the beginning, 
when the scheme came out, we thought uh, it is a really, really a, a fantastic, uh, you know, um, opportunity for us. Uh, it is, it is a really good. It's going to help us go through. Uh, the, the reason is, uh, obviously, we have a small businesses, and they, through this COVID, uh, we suffered a lot. And since this uh, uh, scheme introduced, we realized uh, we business was really increased. And they, at the last moment, I think we were struggling. We were struggling to cope with it. Cope with the demand of... Demand of, of, of people were coming through the door every single day. I mean, honestly, honestly, I mean, last day, the last uh, week, was the Monday was the last day, I think we had a probably about 1,500 customers came through the door. You know, we was really, really struggling. <clears throat> but then again, obviously, uh, now we can see the, the infection rate was going up. So, so, so 1,500 people to come through the door in one day is one a day. lot of people. It's a lot of how people. Did you, how did you manage uh, the safety of customers, the guests, guests, and your staff in whole? I mean, I mean uh, we, we, uh, the restaurant we have, that's uh, about 150 covers, 140 covers. So from 11 or from 11.30 to 12 o'clock, we are serving like 100 customers an hour. You know, we have 140 covers, but uh, we had to keep some distance. So you, the, you, you've, you've actually maintained the distance? We had to maintain the to distance, table. table to tables, yes, yes. And I, we had we had about twenty odd people was working that day, so yes, you, you was really so you, you put your your customers' uh, health and safety f as a priority. Of course uh, we and, did, and, yes, and, and, and the staff as well. Of course, of course we did, yes. Do, do you do you think it was too too short of a period? Should they have carried on for another little bit longer? Do you think that would have? You would have been really helped. I mean, uh, the last day I think I must have reviewed about a thousand people over the phone. So that uh, five thousand people really only came out because of the scheme. Because of the scheme, I believe. I mean, even though if you do this scheme by yourself, I mean, people will not will not come through. So I'm, it's not I'm it's sure. not effective as. If you were to carry on doing it yourself, but it was affected by when the government announced government this. when the government you know, announced the scheme. Obviously, it was in social media, it was in uh, television, it was in everywhere. So people uh, people t uh, took the advantage of it, and everybody knew about it. But when you do it yourself, obviously, uh, how many people you can reach uh, to let them know that you are doing this? So, yes. It's a government scheme, obviously, it's a nationwide, so everybody knew about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Did you, I mean, with, with the closures, with the 10 p.m. Uh, curfew that's in force, how has it affected business like <coughs> yourselves and how would it affect smaller businesses just having probably a, a, a 30 seater restaurant where they have to, they have half Keep the, the seating capacity business, half the seating. and yes. now they've lost two hours or three hours from their opening time. Because a lot of the restaurant, uh, especially within our community, the Indian restaurant industry doesn't open till 6, 6.30. And they're open yeah. to say 12 midnight or half past midnight. Now they've lost two hours, three hours. Do you think that is, that is viable? Would they be viable? Or in Indian restaurant, obviously, as you, as you all know, the business is only a period of two hours, between seven till nine. We do the business, and then, you know, after nine o'clock, whatever customer we get, that's, that's kind of a bonus. But uh, now it's a time uh, we have to maintain. By 9.30, we cannot take anyone in after 9.30. So or you must maybe nine o'clock. Uh, so the, as everybody was saying, you must have everybody vacating the business premises by ten o'clock. By ten o'clock. At ten o'clock, no, no one minute pass and no two minute pass. So they they have to vacate the premises. That's right. So yeah. if you took on somebody, a group of six people, they must finish ordering, eating, and leaving the premises by ten o'clock. By ten o'clock. So the the clo I mean the business closing time should be nine o'clock, not ten o'clock actually. So well, boy, we have a caller online. Let's go to the caller. Mm -hmm. Caller, very good evening to you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. 
আমি I mean, the Indian restaurant only has, has three hours time, if you look at it, it's, that, that's what it is, from six o'clock till nine o'clock. I mean, the government say but it's a ten o'clock time, but you cannot take anybody after nine o'clock, because... There's not one, enough time to... That's not enough time, definitely it's not. So it will hamper little businesses, little restaurants, uh, little cafes who are open for that small period of time, and the capacity that they've shrunk. It, it will, it, it's not going to work in their benefit. No, it, it will not. So will ho not. hopefully for a bigger premises, bigger restaurant, 150 seater restaurant uh, like yourselves, they have better chance of survival. Surviving, yes. Uh, in terms of the, 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 uh, the customers and the client that they can take in on any one night where you only have two hours window, three hours window. That's right, yes. I mean, a bigger restaurant, obviously, you have, a, you, have, you have a bigger expenses as well. I mean, you have to look at that way. Bigger responsibilities. I mean, responsibility, you've got more staff to, uh, you know, um, you have more staff on board, uh, you've got more um, business. Oh, oh, right. uh, yes. Operational cost if I, if is I more. Bring, if I bring Nazir Bhai in, Nazir Bhai, in terms of um, the law, for the last, since March, we've had a lot of things that has changed and that has become new law. Okay? How does a businessman, for example, yes, if you, know, you have businessmen who are not uh, reading the media, who are not on Facebook, who are not watching, you know, how should the local authorities really send them, look, this is your new rules? within your licenses, this is what you have to adhere to, and this is what you have to do. Are they doing that? Is there something that should be done? Well, government is doing. I mean, uh, TV advert, social media advert, local authority, literature, newspaper, booklet, pamphlet, etc. And again, I must say, ignorance is not a defense. No, You absolutely. break the law and you can't say, I don't know. I don't know the law. It is your responsibility to obey the law of the land. That is clear. And going back to what uh, Bodhoshav has said, I mean, in terms of coffee, coffee is totally shut down. We better understand coffee in Bangladesh. So that is the norms of coffee. So you can't say, we have a last customer, we will wait another five minutes, 10 minutes. No, whole business should be shut, complete shut by 10 o'clock. So it is very difficult for customer or even businessman to go in 9.30 and then finish by 10 o'clock. So they have to probably, Prepare from whether they finish their meal or not, they need to be um, uh, you know, out vacating the, the premises, premises by out of the premises exactly. door by 10 o'clock. Exactly. So, in, effectively, I mean, they have to prepare for my I'm going I'm going to drop you. We've got another yeah, caller sure. online. Very good evening, caller. Uh, hello. Hello. Very good evening, caller. Uh, good evening. You're yes, live you, on sir. air. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to thank you, all of you guys. It's a, such a nice program, especially welcome by here. Yeah. So it's, um, this pandemic is especially uh, hospitality uh, industry is really affected. And in terms of the timing of 10 o'clock, uh, is really affecting us, uh, especially our suppliers, because I, I, I run a company which is um, involving with uh, hotels, pubs and clubs and restaurants. And clubs are closed now, obviously. Uh, pubs, uh, they are uh, obviously opening hours 5 to till midnight. But now they are two hours, obviously 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, they can't run. So it is uh, last one week when uh, the timing five to ten is really affecting us, I can see. Kolo, thank you very much for your lovely call. And, and yes, I mean, the, 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 the restaurant industry has lost 30% of their opening time. That's right, yes. Now, it, it is going to be difficult. How do we sort of encourage the customers to, should we open up a little bit earlier? You know, 
you are open from 10 a.m. or you know midday to. Uh, we to open from midday. You open uh, from midday. 10 o'clock, yes. But then again, obviously, uh, lunchtime business is always uh, uh, it's just a bonus kind of a business. I mean, the main trade is the evening trade. So everybody gets out for dinner everybody for six, seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock, and you yes, know. yes, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. This this is the time people go out to eat. Uh, and they don't finish till 10, 11, 11, 11, 12 o'clock. So now everybody knows that they have to, you know, vacate the premises by 10 o'clock. So but, but Ruba, I know you operate quite a few number of businesses. In terms of the catering industry, how much of a spot check has the local authorities in your different, your, your businesses operate from different authorities? How have they been? Have they been encouraging you? Have they, have they done spot checks? Should they do more? I mean, they have done uh, spot checks in in number of places in in Green Street. I mean, uh, they have done a few a few number of times. They they've been um, coming and checking everything, and they see how we you know um, implementing all these uh, you know rules and regulations, safety and all this. So they are quite happy about it. But then again, obviously, uh, I have other businesses outside London. They're not uh, really. Um, Come in and check. A little, little bit more relaxed. More relaxed. More relaxed. Yes. yes. But then again, uh, the the uh, government scheme, uh, when the government scheme introduced uh, about the 50 percent, we realized that in our Asian area we have more customer came through the door, and the, when it goes to like other areas like white areas. He didn't. It, it wasn't. It was, an, it was, was an, an effective as, as such. As, as such, yes, yes. So. Yes. Not to buy. So if, if, if a scenario in terms of uh, the local authorities going to a business to do a spot check, um, is, there, is there a procedure? Should, could they close the whole business down in one go? Is there a procedure in terms of how harsh a penalty can be given? Is there opportunity before going to the last sort of... I don't think a uh, local authority or any enforcement officer has been so draconian. The state will uh, stop the business. I mean, uh, local authority officers, uh, monitoring officers, or enforcement officers are on working the ground. with the are on the ground. Yeah, exactly. They are there to work with the businesses. I mean, to see that they have been complying with the law and regulations. So don't be afraid. I mean, if they visit to you, cooperate with them. They will be just checking that you are uh, obeying the law, you are discharging your duties. That's all. And if you do not have anything to hide, you should not be worried. So the yeah. encouragement is try and find out more about what is what is going on with your local authority. You can speak to them. You can go onto their exactly, website exactly. and see what has changed or what you need to do. Try and do it a little bit more better. That's right. Is yes. that, this, is, this is what you would say, wasn't it? Exactly. Um, instead of... With, with the busy period that you had, uh, Badrubai, did you employ more people or did you have them? Did you take on new staff and things? Yes, in we terms did. Of, was there opportunity? So a lot of people say a lot of people will lose business and lose uh, uh, staffing where people are being laid off in different sectors. Was the restaurant industry or you know, operation like yourself, did you take on more people? We because we don't hear about people taking on people, we only hear that people laying off people. So that's, is, did you take on any? Uh, no, well, of course we, we did take more people on, on board because of that, that certain period was, was madly busy. So obviously you needed more people and we just took uh, you know, more people on board, yes. So are, are you, you know, is that for a short term or for a, a short term? time? So obviously, after that, after that scheme is uh, what well, finished last week or week before. After that, the business is very quiet, as you as you all know. So yes, we had to cut people in hours, and they, you know. I mean, I want to touch up on on something for our community. The NHS app, which has been released, yeah. We need to encourage people to download that, whether it's Android, whether it's Apple. Uh, we, we, we need to tell our families and friends and, and clients. Uh, Bhai, I mean, what, what do you have to say in terms of that? When we, no, exactly. What, I, I, fully, I fully echo what you've said. I mean, we should download this app. This is very essential. It will help you to um, stop uh, spreading and be safe and also uh, to contract and chasing. So that's very important that every one of us 
download in our mobile. It, it is, it is, it is uh, necessary, or it is, is it, uh, in terms of every business must produce one, mm. must encourage. Exactly. Yes. It's very important for individually, for all of us, and also for businessmen as well. Um, Wakarbai, yep. one question for you, or I'll, I'll come back to my other guest. How, how does a small business uh, Badulubai's operation, he's, he's, he's got a lot of, lot of uh, sort of like big lawyers on the ground. Small businesses, how do they got, get from, from the furlough? And if they're not on furlough, how do they get onto that job uh, support scheme? How easy is it? How difficult is it? And how do they take it forward? Okay, in terms of um, keeping your staff, uh, Gombit is giving those initiatives like a job support scheme, sorry, the uh, furlough scheme and then there's a job support scheme. Um, but what you need to remember is if there's no business, then none of the scheme will work. So you need to have business first. Of course. And uh, government is not reimbursing all of the money. This job support scheme will only cover one third of the hours the employee is not working, no whole amount compared to job retention scheme. Um, Where they didn't work, they got the got they the still got the eighty percent or seventy percent or. But this one, they encouraging the, the, the employees to work to work and then the, the same. So it's, it's basically a burden on both uh, employee and the employer. So the businesses need to be good going basically, and the employee need to be working certain number of at least uh, thirty three percent of the usual hours, as I said. So uh, it's it's uh, basically business need to survive at the same time. And uh, this help from government is, is very little incentive to, um, to carry on business. So uh, employers still need to uh, bear the cost of the employee. So if there's no business, how are you going to pay those uh, wages? So businesses need to survive first. Business needs to then survive. These, all of these scheme will work. Uh, otherwise, uh, the scheme is not. So is, is it a lot of work for uh, accountants, a firm like yourselves? How much? I mean, obviously. Uh, over the uh, over over the job retention scheme, a lot of accountants had to work day and night from home, where they, they, they couldn't go into the this, office. Um, I, this this scheme uh, put us under uh, tremendous pressure because this was uh, out of our usual services, what we normally do day in day in day out. So we had to, we, as you uh, <laughs> correctly mentioned, we had to work uh, like uh, harder than like usual. So at that time, even working from home was not a like usual thing for us. So we had to adjust to working from home. We had to set up new. Uh, some of us probably we don't have even like in you know, a good laptop, so probably internet connection at home. So we had to set up those things, and uh, have to spend extra money on like you know buying servers or better internet connection. Yeah, we had to do, do extra work on that, and uh, even the coming schemes, whichever is coming, uh, like uh, this job support scheme and other things. Uh, we we have been doing our bit, I would say, um, in, in this crisis. I, th in this I crisis. think in general, the public, the businessmen and women within our community and everyone else, everybody's got together and everybody has made an extra effort, invested a lot more money. So in terms of but about your restaurant, you probably have to well, uh, so invest a lot more sort of your hand sanitizers, how you do a lot of things. I mean, nobody was prepared for this. So obviously, I mean, a lot of business have to go a l far away and say, look, we need to do this. We need to do this for the general public or the clients and their families. I mean, there must be a lot of cost to it. Is a, it is a, you know, extra cost for you, obviously. Uh, uh, and uh, this sanitizer doesn't come cheaper nowadays. You know, uh, <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's it's really really expensive when you go to a, a. Well, the price has gone up, hasn't it? It's it is. Yes, price. it is. Hand sanitizer. I mean, obviously, hand wash is not that expensive now, but yeah. hand sanitizer ah. is still expensive. And uh, look at the mask and all these stuffs. I mean, it is it is really costly. I mean, uh, in terms of the, the the staff that work in in, in your in your fabulous restaurant, uh, I mean, they're working in a such a difficult condition in terms of meaning they're on their feet, long hours. Now everybody gonna has to wear their mask, which we do. Uh, I mean, tell our viewers, please, please do wear your mask, sanitize your hand, stay as a little bit further away uh, in terms of uh, uh, distancing, social distancing. So they are going through uh, sort of a l harder times than what they would go through six months ago, a year of ago. Of course it is a harder time as you all, all realize it, you know. 
Uh, you have to wash your hands every every 10, 20 minutes, and uh, his hands. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, uh, this is this is a uh, this is a new world for us. Uh, you can say. I mean, it's, everything has changed, hasn't it? I mean, the social uh, gathering. Uh, you know, uh, you can't even you know uh, gather like gathering more more than 30 people. I think it's, it's less. It's six people now. So you can't even see your own families, you know, it's, it's, it's a very new world Gentlemen, for us. We, we, we are coming towards the end of our program, Nazir Bhai. I mean, I would like you gentlemen to take a minute and say and advise and suggest our community, especially the Bangladeshi community, where we are much more vulnerable, how we, uh, you know, how, how we day-to-day -day life, how we run our business, and how we avoid and stay safe within sort of uh, the, the, the situation, the pandemic that we are in. How, you know, please say a no, word. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, the feature of the coronavirus is that it affects all of us, all businesses, I mean, all countries of the globe, directly or indirectly. So we have to be careful, and we have entered into a new era I mean, we have come to a new world, so we must obey the law, we must save ourselves, and then protect others as well. So um, be vigilant, be careful, be kind to others, uh, obey the law, be safe, and protect others. Especially Bangla British Bangladeshi community are the most vulnerable community, even right from the beginning. Now, while government has introduced a lot of um, conditioned lockdown, etc., but while school is open, yet again, British Bangladeshi community, being living in a external families, are most vulnerable. So be careful, be vigilant, uh, be kind to others, especially our parents and grandparents. Um, but Dubai, a few words to our community and... Yes, as, as Nazir Bai said exactly, um, we are more vulnerable than anyone else. Uh, uh, I think we are, the, we are the bottom, we are more vulnerable than even Indians uh, exactly. background or Pakistani background. So because we, we live in an extended family, you know, we all live together. And that's why we're more vulnerable. So just, just to you know, uh, just uh, you know, um, just be vigilant, and uh, um, you know, um, just think about the others when you go out. Keep your social distancing, and uh, um, well, can I a little comment from yourself? Um, thank you, for, first of all, um, again for inviting me on this program. And uh, since I can only. Um, I can talk about my area specifically. I can um, I can advise or request the businesses to um, comply with the law, keep the records, uh, make sure you comply with the like legislation, whatever uh, rules are being introduced um, in terms of whether employing someone or your businesses or turnover or claiming a vet or. Uh, even job support scheme, any of these, make sure to keep a proper record because HMRC is currently busy, so they're probably not checking any of the claims that you're making, whether it out scheme keep or any of them. Make sure very like pay very important on this importance on this because uh, it will come back to you again. So, anyways, uh, you got to be very careful with these things. Make sure to like you know uh, keep in touch with your accountant and uh, keep a clean keep, record. Of keep everything. a clean record clean of everything. Record. Otherwise, uh, you know uh, it's not gonna continue like this. They will definitely come. Thank back. you, gentlemen. I'm gonna have to wrap up this uh, evening show. Thank you very much to Nazir Ahmed, barrister, writer, Wakan Hassan, accountant, business advisor, and Mr. Badrul Hawk, director of Turquoise Restaurant. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, uh, please um, stay safe. Sanitize your hand, encourage others to do so. The NHS app, uh, Track and Trace, encourage everybody to download that uh, until next Sunday, where I'll uh, have uh, two, three more guests who will be speaking um, at the moment. We have concentrated on the COVID-19 situation, how business are, how it affects everyday life. Look after yourself and look after each other. Have a very good evening. <laughs>